Hi, I'm Jo Fry, and this is my channel Jojo Fry Rocks, and today I'm going to be talking about my Ibanez RG550 from 1989. Um, it's a somewhat sad story um, of unrequited love, I feel, in the sense that I absolutely love this guitar, um, but I don't really think that it loves me back. <laughs> to be honest. Um, so this is a guitar that um, I received for my 18th birthday as a very, very lovely birthday present from my parents. And uh, having having been playing my, uh, my Squire Strat that I've had for a number of years, um, and then having made my own guitar, which I covered in my previous video, um, I still still felt the need for another guitar and I'm sure um, this is something that that will probably never change. Um, however, <laughs> I, I felt that um, whilst I was really, really happy with the guitar that I'd made myself um, in, in very, very many ways, uh, there were still some issues in terms of the fact that, for example, it was very, very heavy. Um, so not not really very practical for, let's say, I, I wanted to play a gig. I was in a band at the time. I was in a couple of bands um, when I was at college, and you know, just just your typical sort of covers bands. But um, if you wanted to do a a gig, you know, you were you were going to be an hour or so at least. And uh, unfortunately, you know, there's no way that I could have stood there for an hour. Um, playing the, the guitar that I made, it's, it just was too heavy and, and uncomfortable. Um, so I was I was also kind of moving on again as well in, in my musical tastes and uh, by now I was getting pretty geeky and into um, the sort of guitar virtuoso guys. Um, you know, I was you know, I'd been aware of, of Steve Vai, Joe Satriani and, and people like that, um, but not really, not really very into it as such. Um, but as I got more into playing, um, you know, I took more of an interest in uh, these these guys who had an incredible technique and the sort of guitars that, that they were playing. And it just it seemed to me that these were like the coolest things on the face of the planet. I mean, these kind of super strat style guitars that have, you know, they have like two humbuckers and a single coil. Um, you know, that's that's kind of more firepower than anyone's ever reasonably going to need. Let's face it. Um, and also, you know, I was, I was kind of getting more into like the technical detail of um, you know, the Floyd Rose system, the locking nut, the tremolo, so that you could use it without putting the guitar out of tune, which sounded like a really useful and really practical thing to have, um, because the tremolo arm on my Squire Strat just, uh, just puts it out of tune immediately, um, which isn't the greatest thing in the world. So all of these features as well that allow you to, to play very, very fast, this very, very, what they call a wizard neck, this very, very slim um, one piece maple neck um, that, you know, would allow you to to move up and down the fretboard very, very quickly. Um, all of these were, were features that I didn't have on either the guitar that, that I'd made um, or my Strat. You know, this, to be fair, this, the Strat had a pretty slim neck, um, the Squire Strat, but it was nowhere near, nowhere near as slim as this one. Um, so when I when I got this, um, it was already second hand, so it, I didn't have it from new because um, by the time I was 18, it, it was 1999. So um, the RG550 having come out in, in 1989, it was already a 10 year old guitar uh, by the time it found its way to me. It was in uh, in my local guitar shop, Rock and Pop Music in Weymouth, um, owned by John Story, fabulous musician, 
um, and just all round great nice guy who put up with me for several years uh, coming into his shop all the time and um, and playing hopelessly poor versions of really annoying songs <laughs> basically <laughs> when I was at college um, and uh, this was something that he had in the window. Um, he had a relatively small kind of shop window um, and he used to kind of have two or three guitars sort of hanging in the window usually and I remember seeing this one and it just it just spoke to me it it just looked like like nothing else that I'd ever seen um, this metallic purple finish is absolutely awesome and I just thought it looked I just thought it looked incredibly cool I mean come on like this just it looks the business right I mean enough said <laughs> really um, and I I just thought, wow, that is, that's a proper guitar. That is a guitarist's guitar. That's the kind of thing. I mean, it's literally the kind of thing that Steve Vai would play. I mean, it's not a gem um, with the, the monkey grip handle, but um, which I, I think, you know, as practical or whatever as that might be, I think it looks kind of weird and a little bit ugly anyway. Um, but nonetheless, it's of that style, it's of that same time and uh, yeah, I, I thought this, this is the guitar that is going to make me, <laughs> um, gonna, this is going to make me learn to actually play properly and enable me to learn to play what I thought was properly, i.e. shredding and and just kind of doing all all the impressive and, and whizzy stuff that uh, that these kind of guitar heroes, guitar gods um, were all doing at the time. You know, Engve on his scalloped fretboard, on his strat and everything. Um, I thought, yeah, this is th this is where I'm going. So um, so I got this guitar, and then I quite quickly realized that <laughs> i'm i'm not i'm not really that kind of player um or you know i i started trying i remember getting some tabs for some some joe satriani um stuff off of surfing with the alien and i i think i i gave it a shot you know over a few weeks um but it just wasn't happening frankly, and I, I'm just one of those people that if I can't get it within, I don't know, a couple of weeks, um, if I can't play something that sounds reasonably kind of near enough, close enough to it, that I can sort of play along with the track or, or that I can um, make it sound, you know, I might not be doing exactly what they're doing, but I can do something that sounds near enough to it that you would recognise what I'm trying to play, then um, then I, I kind of get really disheartened and disillusioned and I, and I sort of give up on it. Um, so that's the, the kind of tragedy of, of what happened with this guitar, really. I, <laughs> I kind of gave up on it. Um, and then I, I sort of couldn't really, I didn't really know what else to do with it um, because it's it's a great guitar, it's a great instrument but um, it's certainly not for strumming chords particularly, not not unless you're you're doing kind of I suppose metal riffs where you, you're literally just kind of hitting some power chords and you just want to crank it up yeah, you can do that. You can do that with this guitar and, it, and I and I will do that and I'll show you what it sounds like. Um, but other than that, I felt like it was it was kind of a little bit limited. And 
also at the time, I think I mentioned before that I only had a really basic amp as well. So I hadn't really got my head around the idea that a guitar, an electric guitar is really only half an instrument, right? Um, and I think I was sort of today years old when I finally realised that the guitar is half or maybe even less than half of the sound that you want to make. So it just hadn't clicked. I just, I just never really processed how important the amp is to the overall sound. Um, but also the other things that you need in a signal chain to kind of get the sort of sound, whatever it is that you're trying to do to get that to work, um, you need basically pedals or you need a kind of digital modelling amp that's got some of those effects and things built into it. Um, and of course, the more modern ones, like the one I have now, I have a, a Boss Katana, which I've just bought, and it has some of those things like a blues driver kind of overdrive pedal. It's got several different overdrive type things built into it. Um, and, you know, along with numerous other effects as well. And, and some great amp models. And, um, you know, I didn't have anything like that back then uh, when I was 18. I still had the sort of Fender practice amp that I had, that I've got with my Squire Strat. So I still only really had kind of a clean channel and a slightly less clean channel. <laughs> I think it was, I think there were, or maybe there were three, maybe it was like clean crunch, I'm gonna say, and lead. So there were just, there were these kind of switches that you just switch. It had a volume and a tone, obviously, like master volume and one kind of tone dial. Um, and it, it could have been no more than, a, I'd say maximum sort of 20 watt amp. You know, it was, it was a small thing. Um, but I think, you know, it, it was fairly old, even in, even in 1980, 1999, sorry. Um, I'd had that, you know, kind of since 1994 already, and, and it was all probably already old by then. So um, I wasn't working with the greatest of tools. And I just, I just didn't, it didn't really click. I didn't really get why why I couldn't get this guitar to sound great or or to you know a guitar that ostensibly is just the coolest thing just the coolest guitar um you know I couldn't I couldn't get a sound that I liked out of it and you know that's mainly due to my lack of ability as a player um my lack of understanding of gear <laughs> and um you know and and the fact that i i just don't think i'd put very much thought into um what i'd asked my parents for for my 18th birthday much beyond kind of going that that guitar that one there <laughs> in the window of rock and pop music that's what i want i want this and uh it's not that I, it's not that I was wrong. I think I had ambitions, you know, I had ideas and I, I had, you know, a desire to be the kind of player that a guitar like this um, really deserves. And I really wanted to, to develop my skills and become that player. Uh, but I just never did, tragically. And so, that's why I feel like um, I feel like it's it's an unrequited love, really. It's uh, you know it's still something that I that I love and I try to play, um, but unfortunately, I don't really feel like it loves me back. <laughs> Not in the way that I think it would it would absolutely love to be played by somebody who really truly knows what they're doing. Um, 
unfortunately, very, very sorry, sorry, my Ibanez RG550, but uh, it's not really going to happen because you're mine and you're staying with me. So I guess, uh, I guess the only thing we can do is try to make the best of it and try to make it work.